Well, after your debut, you'll go to Brantford, Ontario, and you'll be interviewed on Ventura's show, The Body Shop. And this is where the WWF audience is first introduced to Damien. Before we uh, talk about Damien, I wanted to ask you, you know, Ventura does a great job of putting you over here as being a really dangerous new competitor. And uh, in both this interview and another one six years later in WCW, he'll compare you to himself, which if you know Jesse Ventura, that's pretty high compliment. <laughs> so, so, Jake, I've heard a lot of mixed things about Jesse over the years. What can you tell us about your experiences around the guy? Take care of Jesse. You know, Jesse's there to take care of Jesse, but he does a good job, man. I mean, there's no denying the charisma um, and, and you know, what he brought to color commentary. So he was fun. And, yeah, like, again, for him to put you over, especially compare you to himself, he's got a high opinion of himself. So if he, yep. that means he's got a high opinion of you. Absolutely. <laughs> well, um, I know that you had previously pitched the idea of carrying a snake to Bill Watts, who foolishly dismissed the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, when Vince would bring it to you, it has to feel pretty surreal. I mean, all that being said, I know you don't like snakes. So yeah. what was the idea of carrying one around daunting for you at all? It was a, it was a pain in the ass, man. It was a struggle every day, every day. I mean, there's nothing like waking up at, you know, say 6 a.m. Uh, you've got four hours sleep. And the first thing you got to do is you got to put the snake out. You know, it's not what you want to be doing. No. You know, that's the first thing I had to do every morning is put the snake away, bag him, put him in the trunk, shut the trunk, get it all set, wrap him up with blankets. Oh, yeah, it's a blast. That sounds miserable. And all that aside, it's like you don't like and are, to my understanding, you were uh, fearful of snakes, right? Afraid of them. So yeah. like. But every morning, first thing, when my eyes opened, I knew what I had to do. Mm -hmm. Go to the bathroom and get the damn snake out. And I'd go in there and sometimes he'd, he'd be cool. But sometimes he'd be wrapped around the toilet or wrapped around the sink. You know, he'd break the shower curtain off. That was always, a, you know, he did that every time. <laughs> every time. Break the shower curtain. Bring it down. I Man, you of those. Their ability to, like, wrap around stuff, from what I understand, like, they can tear a fucking toilet off the floor, can't they? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah they can. I had that done. Holy shit. Water went everywhere. Does WWE pay for that? No, Jake the Snake did. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I'd be about over it with this damn snake. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, pretty brutal, man. Now, Damien is a python, of course, but I'm curious. Was there ever any thought of giving you a different kind of snake to lug around? Why a python? Well, a python has a size, you know, and it's, it's not venomous, you know. Mm. Uh, later on, of course, we went to the King Cobra. Oh, yeah was my favorite snake of all time. Light. Light, only weighed about 14 pounds. You know, I, I could carry him in a Halliburton. <laughs> a small suitcase. I did that for a while. I'd carry him in that and stick him in the overhead. I was Dude. doing takes on a plane before I ever thought about doing a movie. <laughs> There's the inspiration for the movie, folks, for you movie buffs out there. Um, Jake, as a side note, one of the greatest pictures I think I've ever seen in pro wrestling is the picture of the uh, the Cobra sitting up and yeah. you laughing, looking at him. It is like just some of the coldest shit I have ever seen anywhere. That that moment, like you can't plan for something like that. It just happens, right? Well, that was my favorite shot too, man. No, you, you know that that Cobra, he would work with you, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, he would run the ropes side to side if I if I did it. <laughs> like he would lean? He would go sideways. Amazing. Run the ropes with you. Then if you stop, he would stop. If you went towards him, he'd come towards you. If you backed up, he'd come after you. I, I used to back up and jump out of the ring and put my hand on the bottom rope. And then he would strike at my hand. I'd move my hand and he'd hit the rope. Mm. 
<laughs> Fun. Somebody smarten this snake up. Oh man, he could work. You know, the new creative, of course, is, as you kind of touched on there, it leads to the unfortunate task of carrying the snake from town to town. But, you know, from what I've heard, Mike Kyoto, a referee for many, many years there, has said that the ring crew was largely responsible for making sure the animals made it from town to town. Did they ever help you out with Damien? Fuck no. <laughs> Hell no, man. They didn't, they didn't want the responsibility? Nope. Those bastards. Yeah, exactly. Now, I mean, do you know why that like they just didn't want to deal with it, or did, were you on like a specific feeding schedule, or how did that go? Man, I wasn't on no damn schedule, feeding schedule, nothing like that. But it was never mentioned that they would carry the snake. It was on me. You from the very start. Yeah. Now, before we move on, I do want to ask, uh, you know, after the body shop, you're going to do a, a, a squash match against Nelson Velo, I think is how you say the name. And it's the first time you ever put Damien on a fallen opponent. So it makes me wonder, like, here you're handling the snake, but now other people are having to interact with it. Did you go through any training for, like, safety purposes? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> they just gave you a snake. They just gave me the snake and put it on people. <laughs> So, like, this trial and error, like, you're just learning on the fly, like, oh, I have to unwrap this snake to get him off this guy. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, dude. That that could have led to, with the wrong dude, like, if you were a super irresponsible guy, that could have led to, like, catastrophe. Oh, yeah, it, it did at times. <laughs> like you in Mexico when it wrapped itself around you. Yeah, yeah. In Indianapolis when it wrapped around my neck and put, you know, knocked me out. Dude, terrified. Did it ever wrap around one of your like job guys that you were working with? No, but it did bite the referee one time. <laughs> Which ref? Uh, oh, my God. You would ask me his name. What the hell? Fonzie? No. Shit, I can't remember his name, brother. That's okay. He was a West Coast referee. Oh, a West Coast referee. That's not Tim White, is it? No. Well, it doesn't matter. How bad was the bite? Uh, pretty bad because he bit him right here in the face. Oh, shit. And so he had two fang marks underneath one cheek and a fang mark in his forehead. But, uh, yeah, it went after his eyeball. And kind of a badass scar afterwards, I bet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah pretty cool if he was a worker. Yeah, it would. Freaked him out. It would freak anybody out. 